Hollywood has put itself in an untenable position, one in which we could actually watch as the North American box office industry is replaced, not necessarily by other industries, although we're watching that as well, but rather by international studios, which are doing a better job than domestic studios. We've got Chris Gore, a film threat on today. We're going to talk about it. He has strong opinions. And folks, it's the sort of thing that you just can't miss if you want to stay ahead of the culture curve. Welcome back. Welcome back. A zippity doo da day right here, okay? Hope you're doing okay as well. And hope Mr. Bluebird is on your shoulder. Folks, today we are talking about the movie industry. And here domestically, they are not having a zippity doo da day. No, they have gotten away from the things that made them be a okay. They are stepping into all kinds of movies and endeavors and divisiveness that has audiences alienated completely. And yet, there are films out there coming from international studios, such as Godzilla Minus One, which enrapture the audiences, even if it's not in the language which most people here in America tend to speak, being English. Today we're looking at just exactly how bad it has gotten with Hollywood and how much danger Hollywood is truly in. And we think they're in significant danger. You can't ignore that when Pixar is cutting 20% of their payroll. And we think that other studios will follow. Don't forget Amazon Prime Video. Even despite taking the number two spot away from Disney for streaming, they're cutting jobs too. Craziness. Well, let's get straight to Chris Gore and what he has to say. He is the ancient one. He is the one, the guy, the leader who has been doing this since the 80s, breaking down entertainment. We owe a lot to Chris, and we're glad uh, when we have him on. Glad he joins us right now. And my last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to end on this. One last thing. If people, more people don't speak out, on the record, if more people don't speak out, there will not be an industry to save. My local theater, the AMC Burbank 16, they play a lot of Hollywood movies. But you know what they also play? Uh, Non-English speaking films. Godzilla Minus One. The Boy and the Heron. The, uh, uh, they have Fathom events on the regular at, at that theater. They play Indian movies. They play uh, uh, faith-based films. More and more, the percentage of movies playing in the this, in this 16 plex are being taken up by non-Hollywood movies. Because uh, Hollywood's selling something people don't want. Look at the foreign grosses. They're not what they used to be. And this is, uh, we talked about this in another stream with Gary Beekler from Nerdrotic. We may be entering a year, 2019 was a banner year. There were more than, I think it was like seven movies that crossed the billion dollar mark. Yes, in and all, almost all of them were Disney. Right. Yeah. Now, we're entering 2024. We may have a year that not one movie, not one crosses a billion. That is- And it could kill possible. theaters. It's going to kill, I mean- I don't know how some of the small theaters and small towns are going to survive. Theaters I, are pivoting. This is my point. Theaters yeah. are pivoting and they're showing product that's not from studios. They're showing Indian movies, um, uh, Latin Latin films. They're showing movies from all over the world. They're showing, you know, the Fathom events. Go to their website. Look at the lineup. It's impressive. And they're trying to bring, they're even showing UFC events in a theater, right? Like, um, you can pay 20 bucks for a ticket. You sit, you can grab a drink. You can watch it on the big screen in a premium format theater. I think premium format theaters are the wave of the future. But mm -hmm. um, this is all bad for the industry. Um, the Disney files or the D files, that's a complete separate story. I, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Alan to talk about that. But I, I just think we may delay it this week because of ah. the WGA piece. But but um, this is a more people in the industry need to speak up on the record. And they need to speak out. And then you, here's how you know that this will be like something that's okay to talk about. When the Hollywood Reporter and Variety and The Wrap and Deadline and IndieWire, when they start talking about this, then you'll know it's bubbled to the surface. Just like, you know, when Variety only recently said, hey, there's something wrong at Marvel. Like, there's something wrong at Disney. It's like, yeah, we've been saying it. The YouTubers have been the canary in the coal mine pointing this out. So... I and I think the DEI. There's the Chris Wallace clip. Have you seen that? You haven't um, seen it. I, I haven't seen that one. No. Chris Wallace had some people on to debate DEI. You can find the clip. It's on YouTube, where he has some DEI defenders and people that are saying enough is enough. It's not working. This is well, not. Where is, is Chris Wallace now? 
Is Sorry, he, what? Where he was is at Chris CNN? Wallace he, I think he's officially at CNN now. Is he still at CNN? I thought he was. I thought he, he does, does a special CNN. interview okay. format debate show. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't. I don't watch it. I only saw the clip. But the clip is very interesting. Finally, people are pushing back, saying, "We get the intention behind DEI. There's always good intention, right? Uh, but this is not the way to do it because it's hurting the industry, and you're you're actually setting up people to fail rather than um, going through a long mentoring process, which is normal to get into the industry. Uh, they're just they're moving too quickly, so." And this is not the way to do it. And it's just, we're replacing old racism with a new racism. And I, I, I hate it. I freaking hate it. And, uh, you know, there you go. I always say, just go independent. You know, nobody had to give uh, filmmakers like uh, Steven Soderbergh or Spike Lee, among others, or um, uh, just... Uh, just so many other filmmakers that began their careers, they began them as indie filmmakers. And if you know anything about Spike Lee, he doesn't give an F. He gets outside financing from other places. He produces his projects independently. He will distribute them through a major studio after he makes the movie he wants independently. So, and no one is stopping anyone from going that pathway. So I always say indie film is probably the best pathway. No barriers to entry. You can just make an indie film. You can, you know, if if it if there's an audience for it, a studio will want to distribute it. That happens. But um, and, there you go. And there's Chris, there. in in yeah. your D files piece, you made a very important point about that. Talking about future animators who used to think a Disney job was a dream and now don't, because the technology has become so accessible and so relatively cheap, you can do that indie thing in the privacy of your den and make something that's of a quality that is equal to, maybe not quite as equal to, but awfully damn close to a major studio production. So the well, barriers are falling down like crazy. Well, I'll just, I'll say this, that um, um, to quote the Joker, you've got all these rules. <laughs> uh, indie film has no rules. There are no rules. You can use, they just restricted the use of, all this AI and using likenesses and actors. You know what? Indie film, don't care. Don't care. Now, will we see uh, someone like a George Lucas emerge from indie film using AI and special effects that will be on par with um, something big? I don't know. I mean, it could happen. You, when you look at the movie like The Creator, whatever you thought of that movie, no one can critique the amazing special effects in that film. It was really beautiful looking movie by Gareth Edwards, I thought it looked phenomenal. Um, you know, there were some story, I had more issues with the story, but the vision, um, and there were no shortage of good ideas. I think the weakness well, was the script more than anything. But, but, but Luke, Lucas did it at the beginning too. I don't know if you know this, but you know, the, yes. the film school version yeah. of THX. Oh, the the documentary these, THX? Yeah. yeah, well, the thing yeah. is, <laughs> USC Film School, where George and I both matriculated sort of, uh, not quite simultaneously, was also the official place that the U.S. Navy sent their future combat cameraman guys to learn how to make movies. So George got friendly with them, and in the original THX, the short movie, everybody's wearing sailor suits that have been bleached out white without the insignia. That's how he got the costumes. Everybody yeah. sitting at control panels is doing it on ships in the L.A. Harbor that the Navy didn't know they were filming in. Yeah, so, it, I mean, it's and also, by the way, George Lucas came from making documentaries. He made a documentary about Francis Ford Coppola. He made a documentary. I've got an old standard deck yeah. DVD of his early films. They're all little documentaries. What they're saying is Star Wars does have something of a documentary feel in the way it was shot, and that's accurate. So, but that does has nothing to do. I mean, you would you would look at like THX 1138 and say, oh, this guy could make. A science fiction movie. There is nothing from uh, Chinoy's career uh, that would right. tell indicate to me that she should be making a Star Wars film. There is not the feature movies she's made are all these weird animated movies. Um, there's just I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense to me. So all, all those stories are just cope. I don't know why. And I see these people doing. Why do you care what a major corporation? You know, are you're defending a major corporation? That is the very definition of shill. 
So the people I see defending, they're coping. They're, they're, they are they want to remain on Disney's good side. They want to go to the world premiere or whatever it is. I've never cared about like that. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but I, I really believe there could be an indie film movement where there are no barriers to entry. And many filmmakers you see like that they, they can't, a lot of the Marvel filmmakers came from indie film. All right, folks, what did you think of Chris Gore and his opinion about this? We'd love to know. Drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts. Also, on your way out the door, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Don't forget now. Don't forget, not only do we want you to go to thatparkplace.com and bookmark it, please. Not only do we want you to keep coming back for the content we create, but Film Threat, uh, Chris Gore's endeavor, his enterprise, Film Threat, the website, the YouTube channel. Uh, what a fantastic resource, folks. Please add it to your list. And there, there, there are exposés that are coming out. I think it's the best work Chris has ever done in the past three decades. It's, it's incredible what he and Alan Ng are achieving right now. Go check it out. Friends of the channel. We love their stuff. All right, folks, that's it. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.